Yeah. We can have this for Valentine's Day. Or we can have this. <laughs> uh, let me see. <laughs> mm. yeah, forget the coconut, right? No. I don't think so. Thanks, Jermaine. This, this is our... One? Where did you get that one from? Jermaine. Jermaine? Yeah. Jermaine, we love you. Yeah, we love you, man. I've been sucking on this one. This is incredible. I love it. I love, love her. I mean, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yes. I love the coconuts. That I wish I had that opener years ago. But uh, they so didn't easy. have openers. When I, I love that. I just had to put a screwdriver, screwdriver, and crack this outer husk. Then I could mm -hmm. crack the inner husk. You know, I had, I had an idea for the storefront. Yeah? For people who are listening. Coconuts? No, having that opener. We have people who come in here all the time asking yeah. about... They need that, oh, that, that, that screw opener. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool there. And um, hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to spend some time with you today. And I'm going to make this a little personal time uh, to spend with you. I hope you don't mind uh, a little um, look at who Dr. Morris is a little more and a little bit about my life. So I'll answer a few questions out there because things have been coming up about different things, you know. And I think it's important that we all understand uh, what spirituality is and what it means to you um, in terms of your survival and your experiences. Because remember we talked about this and everything that you think, everything that you desire is energy you put external to yourself that goes out and then connects with life and, and rearranges and puts what your attention is on and puts life to that, puts energy to that. And then you pull it into your focus and experience it. So, uh, I want to do a little bit of um, going back and giving you a little understanding of where I've been and what I where I came from and that sort of thing. But I sure have a lot of questions to answer here, but I think maybe this will be a little helpful to you to understand my side of this. But, um, I want to first thank everyone that sends their send their comments uh, in through Jermaine. I, I'll tell you, Heather, uh, Debbie, Ann, Karen, you guys, you know I love you. Um, Jan, you love you too, sweetheart. Uh, Lucas, uh, Starwalker, my friend, hello there. Uh, Cindy, Ellen, uh, I, your comments uh, make me want to cry. Robin, uh, Pita, you know I love you, bro. Uh, Dimitri. All you guys, Monica, I can't even, there's, there's not enough, Kate, uh, Lily, I mean, there's, there's about Bert, and Linda, there's, there's all of you guys, I'd like to personally thank all of you, Amy, uh, um, uh, Mark, I, all of you guys, I want to thank you, Tracy, thanks guys, I appreciate it, now, oh wow, yeah, Misha, uh, Myrna, Myrna uh, Misha, I appreciate that, sweetheart, uh, the, what's the Dr. Morse detox spa? You know, I, I just love to see you guys go out, start a new livelihood for yourselves that gives you a sense of accomplishment and a sense of happiness and peace because not only you're working on yourselves, you're working on the others. And I've said this before, there's, to me there's nothing much more spiritual than to help others get well. Uh, and, and, and help, you know, other souls down that road, whether it's plant, animal, human, it doesn't matter, you know, all alive, Kelly, you guys, Sam, you know, I don't even feel us, I, I, I could go on and on, Nancy, forgive me, I, if I missed, I just love y'all, thank you for your comments, I, I appreciate that, uh, Juby, Juby, us, I'm decided to do this, but I want to tell you, you, you guys can ask me anything. Uh, I, I, if someone takes things off the Facebook or something, it's just because, you know, there's just certain attitudes out there that, uh, now we, we don't take anything off our site unless you're rude 
and obnoxious and that it, it just poisons the, 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 the stack. Because it isn't about, I'm afraid to answer questions or anything. As you know, I'm putting myself right out here for you guys and I'm giving you so much stuff that took me a lot of years to learn. But I, I, I think that's how life should be. As we grow and learn, we pass on so it can expand itself. Here, everybody's kind of pulling in because the negative forces are like like that. So I'm just doing a little journey of my life here through just a little bit for them and kind of explain a little bit about me and, uh, and uh, my teeth. Who gives a shit about my teeth? You know, that sort of thing. And about regeneration because... Um, you know, most of what I know and have learned about regeneration was on you guys, not myself. I've never had any problem that I've known about. My eyes show several, of course, as uh, your guys' do, but I think I'm down, uh, uh, in terms of genetic weaknesses, probably down from a lot of you guys. So many of you guys have strong genes. I'm, I'm literally amazed when we do their eyes, you know. I don't have the lymph toxicity. Mm -hmm. But I was raised uh, by my grandfather, who I call Dad, and I was raised by my grandmother, who was a school teacher. She was a veterinarian's daughter, and she was a very, very proper lady. Uh, you cussed, you got soap. You spelled wrong or mispronunciated. She's always in your face with that, you know. But she was so loving woman. My grandmother was always singing, always singing. Like, she's always internally happy, you know, and I'll never forget that, you know, and it's just, I was like, oh, man, you know, just a happy beautiful. person. Oh, yeah, yeah, just beautiful, but she was a beautiful woman, right. model and all that, but she was a school teacher. She actually drove the bus, picked up their students, grade 1 through 12, brought them to school, taught them, and took them back home. What a heart. What a heart. What wow. an old days, you know. And then I had a mother and I had a sister. And my sister's a couple of years younger than I am. She's a nature path. She'd rather work in a jewelry store, though, than be a nature path. But uh, I don't know. You know, some people just, you know, feel like they can't do some things. And I think it's because she still smokes. She probably feels bad That's about that. That's just their journey, though. Exactly. You easy. know, this whole judgment thing is right. coming around a lot here. And I think it's important because this world has so much judgmental attitudes and backbiting. That's actually when I was living in the woods. That was the one thing I really didn't want to get involved with humans anymore because they're just so judgmental. We hang around plants. Nobody cares. They just sit around and love you for whatever you are. Animals just love you for whatever you are. They don't judge you if you took a left or a right one day. But humans... You know, they. You know, it's amazing how, where humans have got themselves, and that level that's hard to work out of. That's why, just on the side here, you know, if you can get with the spiritual side of our teachings here and know what that means to you, you can stop this insanity in this heavy materialistic world and the karma that's constantly being created by yourselves. How you stop that and get off of this rock? Okay, so I wanted to kind of go back. You know, I was raised in Indiana, and my grandfather, and I'll call him Dad, was a workaholic. And I was raised in a little town in Indiana that was an artist community. Yeah, you might want to have a seat. <laughs> this could take my... No. <laughs> my grandfather was such a workaholic. We had farms. He was a Chrysler, a Plymouth Dodge, Alice Chalmers tractor dealer. He had apartments. He had office building. My dad was a workaholic and just you know, had a lot of things. The problem with that is I remember standing in the crib and my, my grandfather bringing in me a little list of things to do. I mean, that's how far back I remember. I was trying to find a picture this morning of me in a horse and cart because I had a newspaper route probably when I was three years old. I mean, that's, that's it. You're saying that little Dr. Morris had chores? Little Dr. Yeah. I mean, really? chores? Are you kidding me? And we were sitting. Responsibility. Oh, we we our home. We had two houses, one for me, my mom, and my sister. Yeah. And then across the little drive was the main house, and it was an artist house. So we got the studio, but we sit on three acres of yard. So when the winter comes up north, you know what that's like. You're from New York. You've got to rake leaves. Mm -hmm. Well, we're three acres of raking leaves because my dad. Oh, there's a stick. Pick it up. A little stick. Yeah. So that's the way I was raised. Uh, we had horses as well there. So after uh, 
you know, like I said, I had a newspaper route, a lawn mowing business, I washed dishes in a restaurant, and I worked on the farms. Uh, fencing, building barns, and Christmas trees. And when we put in Christmas trees, that was, that, that, I was a teenager then, and that was the hardest work I've ever done. You know, my uncles had farms, and every time I go sleep at night, I had to put up hay or pick tomatoes or ring hogs' noses. I mean, oh, there's always something to do on the farm, and some of it wasn't very pleasant, and some of it was real hard work when you're a young kid, you know. And Christmas trees, really hard work. So all I knew growing up was work, 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 work. I never had much time off. We didn't. You know, have that. In the summer, my dad had built a house down here on the island, Anna Maria Island, and we came down there and played a little bit for a couple of weeks, but it was work my butt off. Mm -hmm. So I married my childhood sweetheart, and I had, uh, you know, never, never had fun, never had a chance, because it was always work, 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 you know, have fun when you retire, and yet he died working, you know, and that's what Jensen did, and I said to myself, I'll never be a workaholic and die working, and by God, that's where I'm going, you know, and it's like, eh, but I'm, I enjoy the work, and, and that's okay, and I'm sure my grandfather did, you know, but my grandfather was probably one of the most honest uh, men alive, he uh, was well respected in the community, of course, and uh, they knew him by his handshake, and so, to show you the honesty my dad had, one guy uh, traded in this RV one time, and we're in a small town. My dad said, I don't even know if I can even sell it. I don't even know what to give the guy for it. So he gave the guy an offer for it, traded for a new car. So believe it or not, somebody came in and bought that RV. Wow. So my dad called up the guy that traded it in. He said, I want you to come over to my office. Mm -hmm. So the guy came over to his office, and my dad, when he came in, my dad handed him a check for $350. I still remember this, and this goes way back. And the guy looked at my dad and said, what's this? And he said, I made more than I wanted on the RV. Here, you can have this back. That was my dad. So that's pretty honest. Not too many people are going to pay you back if they feel they made enough money on a deal. It just doesn't right. happen. Right. I'm looking at my dad, you know, and I'm watching all this stuff. And that's why I've learned that honesty is ex always, always, without doubt, the best policy. You'll find that right now we have governments hard to be honest. But once you start a lie, it bills and bills and bills. So I was a musician, of course. I was in uh, high school as a trumpet player, and then my, my, my mom was a piano freak, and so every day, me and my sister, an hour every day, I had to play the piano for her, you know, and take mm -hmm. lessons. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm a guitar lover. You know, here's, here's the Beatles just coming in, and I'm actually, I started a group, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is me way, way back when we were first called the Cherries. And I'll show you some pictures here. Here's a gig we were doing somewhere. I can't remember where that was. Now this is 1964, I think, or 1965. Here we were a little rowdy bunch. And then we uh, became the loving kind. And that's what we call ourselves. And we started playing at sororities and fraternities. That was a lot of years ago. <laughs> and I thought my lot would be a musician because I love to write music. And I thought that's what I would do. And um, that didn't happen. I went this way. That's me as a fruititarian back in 1970. <laughs> you were chilling. I was chilling. <laughs> Man. You know, uh, I went into the woods, and I was raised with a lot of milk and meat. There's no question about it. And the, I didn't suffer from 
chronic pain or anything except chronic migraines. I had migraines all the time and I was always stopped up and on nose drops. So was my grandmother because we drink milk, 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 milk. Mm -hmm. Even in high school, I, if a kid didn't want his milk, I'm saying, hey, do you want your milk? I'll drink it. And I'm looking back and I, I didn't even like the friggin' ass taste of that crap. Mm -hmm. And yet I was doing that, you know, and it was like, oh, I had no idea. You know, and so I was just congested out the butt. I couldn't poop, constipated as hell, and stuff like that. Those are, and and it's fighting obesity, and those are the things that I went through as a child. Really, not a lot of pain or anything, but I've never really being overweight. When you're born overweight, a lot of times you lose self-image. So I had a self-image problem. I I, di I didn't like myself because it, you know here's all these guys with good bodies and stuff like this and. You know, you just you just kind of lose self-image. So I've kind of had that problem through the years, you know, because you just, you know, sometimes it's hard to, to say, I'm okay, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why I teach you guys that. I'm okay. You're okay. We're all okay, you know. And that's what we have to arrive at. We have to get away from this, this judgment and this uh, condemnation, negativity yeah. of others because it is what it is. Yeah. The truth is there to grab and go on, but... Uh, you know, we all are at different levels of doing this. You know, when I came out of doing the uh, fruitarian, which was about two to three years, I, I had ran out of money and I just built me a, a duplex and had sold it and was living off. I split the money with my father and I lived off of that. Well, when I was getting down real low, I'm thinking, I've got to come out of the woods and get a job and I don't want to be around people. But uh, I went ahead and uh, came out and then got a small... Um, place on the beach and a little little fifty dollar a month i mean a little room basically on the side of a house hut. yeah hut <laughs> and uh you know i was just trying to find my way in and what i would do so i said well how can i help people and so I decided to open up health food stores, and I show you two of them. I started with a small one, about five, six hundred square feet, real little bitty thing. But I had people lined up trying to get in there before I was even done with it. And I'm a carpenter because we built far barns and all kinds of stuff, you know, growing up. So I knew how to build stuff and houses. You know, I've been I built houses. So so I'll show you my first health food store. And it was called Country Life Natural Foods. And this was the door to it. And this was in a mall. Let me show you just a few pics of what I have of this. Impressive. Yeah, this is, I had fun. You see how I got everything crammed in there. And I should have stayed that way. But nothing literally stays the same on this planet. Nothing. So then there was a big building across the street open up. I mean a big, um, um, what do we call them? Uh, oh yeah, look at this one. This is another one. See, I built everything out of wood. And this is, of course, back in the early 70s. So a big, uh, a big you know, uh, retail place came available by the post office. And this was 600 and that was 1400 Tripled the money, but I thought, wow, I could, you know, I'm right by the post office. I could triple my business and I could have a, a huge book place in there. So I did. I built a whole room as big as my office and just books. I remember one guy used to come in and load up with books like this high once a month. Come in because I'm I, I read you know I, I was I was a mental freak at the time. I read every you see my library here. This ain't nothing. Can I pan I've given, a little bit, huh? Can I pan a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. They've they, most of them's oh. been in here, but you can pan if you sure. want. But I have a, a library half this big at home. I have Jensen's library, and I've given away at least this library. It's all the way behind you and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And it's just that uh, hungry, hungry for truth, you know? Knowledge. And knowledge yeah. and hunger. But more than knowledge, and knowledge was a factor at first, but truth was more important. Because knowledge is something, you know, you can read about, you think you're gaining knowledge, but a lot of the stuff you're reading now, remember, some of it's theories, some of it's a personal experience, a person that doesn't work on other people. True. And so, knowledge, I don't know where to put that in context, you know. 
I needed truth. I wanted to know who, because that's driving. From a young lad, I had this driving need to know what the unknown was. I would walk by myself as a little bitty kid deep into the woods, wow. you know, and yeah. we had wild, wild the woods, you know, and I just, I, I needed to know what was, what was behind that next rock. I needed to know what was behind the darkness. I needed to know what was behind the unknown. And it was a driving, pulling force with me all my life. And I was a God man when a kid and I didn't even know it, you know, and I was just driving force to know the truth. Just, I can't even describe it. So anyway, going back to the health food store, I went ahead and rented the other one, and I made a bigger one. So I hired the kids, and the, uh, there was a young lad with cancer, and they didn't have any money to send him down to Mexico. So I paid him a bunch of money to come into my health food store and paint the walls. And this is my honey bin. You see how I built that with the honey barrels? And I had about 50 different types of honey from all around the world. I had honey from every source you can imagine. And they came in and painted the walls. And you'll see these pictures. You'll see the walls behind them are painted to give this young lad enough money so the mom could take him down to a cancer clinic in Mexico, you know. And I'll just show you some of these pictures real quick. Don't want to bore you too much. But a little personal video here to help understand who I am and about that. These are different areas and I had a, a different section for everything like the freezer I had set up like a cabin in Alaska uh, all kinds of things. I like the scale. In the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I wanted to have fun. I, I just tried to find a picture and I don't know. Look at the rainbow. Oh wow. yeah, and the, who and the, painted that? The kids, the high school, high school students, uh, and I have some more, but I don't know where they are. But of showing all the herbs that I had behind me, and uh, you know how that was, because I I didn't know anything about herbs when I had the health food stores, but I was intrigued. God was whispering. And I was halfway listening, thank God, because I was into vitamins and minerals and stuff. I even had my own line of vitamins and minerals. You know, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I decided what I wanted, and I had them produced for you me. You did your own bottling. Mm -hmm. your own... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... For years. It's just the way... And I know. For I years. know. For years. And I came on board a little bit right after you stopped. Did that, you? Yeah, that that's right. That's right. Right after we stopped bottling our own, yes, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I mean, wow. the years pile on here, yeah. don't they? I know. But that's a show. Yeah, yeah. People so, in need, though. Well, this is so. what happened. Is when I had the larger health food store, a gentleman came in one day. Now, listen, I'm a fruititarian. I'm opening up a health food store, and I'm at the same time. I'm an out-of-body traveler. I am traveling. I have the Eckmasters working with me aggressively every night. It's like an, a, a major experience. I'm working with others on the inner planes. I'm being worked on on the inner planes. I mean, it just every I had so much energy that uh, people would come up and walk. I remember one lady came up to the counter one time, and I was just kind of really being in the now, and she said, "My, i got to get out of here. She said, I'm about to leave my body. What, who are you? And I said, I'm just channeling energy right now. That's all it is. You know, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just absorbing into the Godhead, you know. So it was so energetic, I, I had to come down. But the thing is, I, back then... And if you look at Jensen's Health Valley Ranch, you'll see the consciousness then, you had all levels. Just like right now, you have all levels of people. And that's what you have to realize is that there's all levels of people. You got the natural hygienic thinkers, you got the fruitarian thinkers, you've got the vegan thinkers, and you've got the uh, uh, vegetarian thinkers. You just have all levels to this. And I think that's what people have to understand. The mind wants to categorize like, uh, like the medical profession and, and put in categories and, and try to attach labels to things and no this natural health field is the, is the huge i mean it's life Med, the medical's an alternative modality that 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 you know that's going to go through some radical changes it'll bring people into the awareness that god and nature are the keys i was just listening to something on fox news they were talking about nature being the largest laboratory they were talking about something that they just discovered blah 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 blah, blah. so uh 
you know, I started eating out of my own store. And I started eating uh, carob-covered pineapples, carob-covered bananas, carob-covered um, uh, papaya. And I, I almost eat the whole box when yeah. it come in. It was so good. I know. And then, of course, raw milk yogurts. I knew milk wasn't good for you at that yeah. time, but right. I did sell it. But I had raw milk uh, cheeses and, of course, raw milk yogurt. I didn't know that raw milk yogurt being probiotics, basically, was good, wasn't good for you. That caused mucus in it. I didn't realize that. You know, I, I'm studying and being a fruititarian, but I went from farm boy to fruititarian and missed all this in between. So, obviously, I have to go back and learn some things to be able to tell you how to get there and get up at these higher levels. I had to learn, come back and learn all these things down below. And boy, it wasn't fun because it, my body hurt. I was eating nuts like crazy. So I, I'm very oh, kidneys, familiar with nuts. Oh, right. crap. I didn't know. Because nuts are healthy. Are you right. kidding? They're natural. They're from a tree. So I just, and of course, I mix raisins with them all the time. Raisin and pine nuts. I think I bought myself out of pine nuts. <laughs> and and uh, almonds and, yeah. and, and pecans. I ate like crazy with raisins in them. It was just so good. But then I started gaining all kinds of weight. And I'm going, I don't feel good. I, I didn't know it was acidic. When pain. I was back then, yeah, pain in the kidneys. I didn't even know anything about that. Right. I, mean, I thought, well, what's going? You know. And then, of course, I'm realizing about these other forms of food. I don't know. It's it's good, but I still love the fruitarian level. But I didn't realize how bad the lower levels were because you you know I'm I'm, I'm young and I'm just going through this. Well, then a man came into my store where where a very wealthy man came into my store named Sarna of Sarna Bells. And he was an importer-exporter of bells from India. And he asked me, he said, uh, I'm Mr. Sarna from Siesta Key, Major Moolah. And he had rented Ringling Brothers Hotel. It's gone now, but it's down in Five Points in Sarasota where mm -hmm. all the Five Points, all the water is, and then the big... Uh, uh, boats and all that out of them. It's gorgeous over there. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, but yeah. this was an old, this is Ringling Brothers Hotel. Mm -hmm. Of course, Ringling Brothers, you know, big part of Sarasota. So, he rented the whole lobby and opened up an Indian restaurant called the Taj Mahal. And he had a replica of the Taj Mahal there. And back then, Paul Horn did a, 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 a CD of, of a flute music in the Taj Mahal. And that's an incredible album. Uh, Paul Horn playing the flute in the Taj Mahal. It's incredible sound. So I'd never had Indian food, but he came in and he said, uh, I have an Indian restaurant, and he said, uh, uh, would you be interested in selling me wholesale beans and grains for my uh, Indian food? Uh, and dried peas and stuff. And I said, yeah, sure, absolutely. I said, uh, what is Indian food? <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, well, you have to come down and check it out. And so I did. And we became good friends through the years, you know. But that food liked to kilt me. It was all cooked. I, I, I Vegetable korma. I wasn't doing meat. And I had vegetable korma, uh, martar paneer. I did do the nan. Because I didn't know. It was calling mm -hmm. up a past life, dude. I, I was going, oh, my God, this is so good. My body was strangling me. The pain, the horrible coming down off a fruitarian level. Uh, at the same time, I'm lecturing. I'm, I'm doing classes in health. I'm lecturing on out-of-body experiences. The energy's coming through me, roaring like a, like a stream off a mountainside. And, and, I'm, ha and I, I'm realizing why I'm into cooked. I'm starting realizing that I'm too immature to be a fruitarian and, and be a God-man simultaneously because I, I'll burn. I was burning then, and people were burning around me. And uh, like I said, I could sit around people, and they would start going, i got to get out of here. So I had to come down from that. It, w it was too much, you know, and things were going crazy around me. So I had to just slow way down, and, uh, and the cooked foods helped me to, to, lose, to lose my energy, you know, because I wasn't about to stop being a God man. I would be a God man if I eat dead animal meat all day long because yeah. that's the only thing that's worthwhile. That's the only thing. If you ask me the only thing I care about, that's it. I've, I've, I'm an extreme God lover. I can just tell you. And that's why I don't, I'm a recluse because unless the conversation is halfway decent, 
it's hard to sit around with frivolous conversations all the time because there's so much, you know. <laughs> you good? Yes, we're good. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, 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 thanks. A coconut milk to you. Yeah, take a break. Yeah, there you go. Thanks for your help. No problem. Thank Anytime. you, thank you, thank you. We'll yep, see you yep. soon. Yeah, yep. I want to see that go nowhere. Yeah, I'm going to do a pop. It's staying on your desk. I want that cupcake to stay there. <laughs> I'm not going to eat it. Right. Uh, uh, hell Good no. Man. I mean, uh, <laughs> ah, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, so, you know, here I'm going through. I hadn't been, I mean, I'm struggling to be raw, and I'm eating the cooked food. So then my body's going through hell. I'm trying to lower my energy, but keep energy, stay raw, can't do what, and it's just, it's just a nightmare. And I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to lecture. My heart is in God and out of body travelers. I'm trying to do the raw. I'm trying to make a living. I get. I become a naturopath and a chemist. And then I'm. I, I'm trying to get business. I hook up with a chiropractor who graduated from Palmer. He was an out of body traveler too. So him and I became good friends. Taught classes for years together, and uh, just to try to survive and make money. Uh, it was so hard in the earlier years, and of course, you chiropractors got your way, but the nature paths have been scorned and ridiculed and imprisoned, and in some cases shot and terminated uh, through the years over raw foods and getting well. So you can see what kind of planet you live on. So I'm, I'm, uh, you know, being raised uh, on all the milks and everything. I'm having fillings from one end of my mouth to the other, and these old dentists just ground the whole too. So all my teeth are full of metal fillings, algum fillings, full of mercury. So th there's what we have to, the older people have to deal with, is all the friggin' mercuries that these guys went nuts over instead of taking care of a little bit of a cavity. They took the whole part of the tooth. So here I'm all, all fillinged up. And, of course, my lymph system in my head is so backed up from all the friggin' milk, and I'm detoxing and detoxing, but at the same time, my life is a whirlwind. Things are happening fast, changes, uh, uh, poverty, uh, I can't even begin to tell you. I'm a musician, I want to go that way, but then here's all the, here's the raw and the helping of people this way, and here's God over here, let me, be, let me go to the, uh, the uh, Himalayas and, and, and become a, a cave freak. You know, I, I, I was just, you know, it was, it was, it was tough. But I worked myself through the years, you know, doing, building custom homes on the side and everything, trying, struggling to get back to my fruititarian desire and wanting and raw foods and different women in my life. Of course, uh, some were good in terms of raw foods, others not so much. It's hard to find a mate that's a, a raw foodist. And, and back in the 70s and 80s, Right now, there's so many beautiful YouTubers. You men have uh, uh, some of the most beautiful and, and aware women to pick from. Uh, not so much coming along here. When I got into Ekin cars, there was tens of thousands of us worldwide, and mostly women. And hard to find good spiritual men out there. And even for the men, you know, it's looking for a good spiritual woman that can share those same likes. And that's tough because generally opposites attract in creation. Oh, you know, and so it's just that part of a growth and opening up because the more you get lost and the problem with finding that beautiful someone is getting lost with them. Because when you find someone that is so got everything you're looking for, you just go whoosh, you know, you absorb and you have to be careful about losing yourself. This is why God has all these little bitty <laughs> inroads and, <laughs> and ditches and everything else you go through. So you will have some ability to stay self and not get lost too much. And that's the issue. As you awaken, the pull to get lost is even stronger and you start to realize why souls get lost so long or place so much down in these very materialistic worlds, you know. So uh, I really hadn't a chance to get in and as hard as I worked on myself way back to get my, my mouth regenerated because then I'd had some uh, root canals and stuff by then, but my mom had lost all her teeth in her 20s and my sister in their 20s. So I'm in my uh, 60s and just starting to lose, you know, I've kept as much as I could. I thought I did pretty good. 
And when I was on all fruit and oranges, I never lost any teeth. I know, Juby, you talk about sweet fruit in your teeth, but I can just tell you sugar is alkaline, not acidic. Acids is what destroy the teeth, not sugar. And we have to define sugar. This morning on Fox News, they're talking about sugar or fructose syrup. Uh, or high fructose syrup is addicting, like he said, marijuana and cocaine, the pressure center in the brain, this bullshit like that. And of course, you know, sugar, it, 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 that's the problem. It's the main need of the human body, but a simple sugar. So we just throw these words out here without any qualifications, so it gives wrong opinions and wrong assumptions by the populace. So now sugar's bad. And now all you, some of you guys picked up on that, sugar's bad. And it's like, what? You know what I'm saying? You have to read through the lines and people don't qualify themselves, particularly medical doctors, because they don't know. They're just echoing research and echoing others and echoing what they see. They don't have experience. They don't have knowledge in those fields. And these, these uh, news agencies pull in these medical doctors for, to be their, their uh, uh, analysts and medical analysts and stuff. And they're all, no offense, but you guys aren't real bright when it comes to health and wellness, and yet you're giving opinions out there that really hold no water or substance, and yet, you know, the people are listening and buying into that. And that's the sad thing, because it's just a p continual preparation, uh, perpetration of the, um, of the uh, untruth of life, you know, that which in, encases and locks you and closes you in. So I hadn't had that chance. I was a fruititarian with a friend of mine. He was a really good-looking dude. Women loved him. His eyes were as blue as the sky, you know, and strong constitution. And going back and looking at his eyes, and like, geez, I didn't have that. I wasn't that lucky, you know, to have that kind of constitution. He was regenerating his enamel in the first year as a fruititarian. Now, Yaz, who's one of the YouTubers and one of our clients, he's over in Indonesia. I mean, Yaz, I, you know, from what I hear, and I'm anxious to hear where you are now, but he's starting to get at that level of regeneration of the teeth. That's a deep level, let me tell you. And your lymph has got to be moving up out of the head area. And I've struggled with that a lot of years, you know. And the busier you are, it's hard just to always jump in and be that way, especially when your life is just in turmoil all the time and stuff. There's a lot of factors. And you got to care and love yourself. And there's a lot of other factors that are involved in your ability to stay raw and do it and go after these things. That's why I say to you guys, try to excite you to do it and to go as deep as you can. Because I know what's probably, in most cases, going to be down the road for you. And that's how we learn. So enough ask me about my teeth, okay? Hey, you want to believe me on that? Then I don't really care. But you've seen enough regeneration on this, Juby, and on these, on, on, on these uh, you, uh, YouTube sites. Uh, and if you haven't, then, then uh, look at it more. Look at the people that are getting their bodies regenerated. You, when you're up in the head, this is the most difficult you know, to get in and regenerate teeth. But you can regenerate your teeth like you can bone. So you brought up this thing about an abscess. You know what? You have to understand that you're losing your teeth because of lymph, not because of sweet fruit, especially sweet fruit. You know, you lose your teeth more on acid fruit because it makes you an acid saliva. Uh, uh, sugar's alkaline. It alkalizes. And you don't lose your teeth in an alkaline medium. You lose your teeth in an acidic medium. You must look deeper within that because what's your teeth made out of? Cells. And floods, like everything else. You have some matrix in there. It's a little different, just like bone. You have a little matrix of phosphorus and calcium. It locks everything right in. Stay still, my lovely coconut. So it's tough, you know, to get up here and do this. You wash your mouth out and stay focused. And that's why I say when you get there, you know, I've had so many years of this and been through so many ups and downs and then battling governments and battling this that it really get you sometimes, you know what I mean? It turns a warrior out of you sometimes, and really this is all an illusion. And it just makes everything you go through makes you stronger. And the same here with me, you know. I don't mind any of these questions. It's how you ask them. And it's how you ask them to whether you get a response back. And it's how you ask them of what type of response you get back. Because I don't mind you asking me anything. I have nothing to hide. I mean, it's, we lay everything out as open. 
you know, but I've had cases out there that I've ran people. I've ran people deeper than I've even been. Uh, just, you know, it's just how it is. And uh, I've built houses far more beautiful than the one I live in. I live in a little mobile home thing. And yet I've built, you know, five, 6,000 square foot homes for people before. I'm just saying. So anyway, I thought I'd give you a little journey into my life and... Uh, where I was as a youth and growing up, and I, I've just, I've worked, work, 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 work. I, I've just never had much fun. I got the divorce from my first wife because I just, I hadn't had any fun, and I was 21 or something at the time, or 20, and it, it's just, um, you know, I, I love adventure and freedom and the things that you all love, and so it was tough. You know, those are tough. Emotional things are tough. I'm not good with emotional things. I'm sure a lot of you are not either, but as a man and half female, half and half I feel, and raised by women, you know, I that's why I polarize probably more to the female principle than the male principle, because when I look at my grandfather slash dad, the workaholic, so I polarize to the females a little more because there was more love and compassion and understanding where my grandfather was, get your butt out there and clean that barn out. <laughs> and it's like, I don't ride horses anymore. My sister does. Too bad. Girls don't work in our house. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, it's that sort of thing. But I love you all, and I appreciate all your questions and your re and your responses. And thank you all for your lovely uh, comments uh, from Jermaine. I mean, I just, I don't know what to say. I love you all. Hmm. You know, we're just here to help each other get well. We can't judge each other. I mean, if you do that, then please don't, don't, don't talk to me. Go somewhere else because I don't have the time for it. And I'm really here to help you guys get well and myself and everyone I can. Because truly, God is the key to my world in every way, shape, or form. I can care about less about anything else, to be honest with you. Uh, I am a total God-absorbed person. I Nothing else matters to me. It's just, I like to have a halfway happy life. But I'm telling you, the God consciousness and working on that levels and working on areas way, way away from here is my priorities. But anyway, thanks for bearing with me and listening to me and I appreciate it. I love you guys. Okay. Chris, we can cut this uh, right here. I'm going to go to question and answers and uh, try to get some of that in here. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, again, it's good to be with you. Uh, I hope that personal video doesn't bore you too much, but I thought I'd give you a little insight. And I'm sure I left out a whole bunch of things that probably could have told you about myself, but it's enough to say that we all we all struggle to be more than we are sometimes, you know, but you just got to settle in and and know that I'm here to try to get you to go as deep and as push you as far as I can while you're doing it. Because when you come out of this, sort of speak, and I don't mean it, because sometimes when you get feeling so good, you'll say, I never will, I'll never eat that. I said those things. I'll never change. I'll never eat cooked food. I'll never do this again. Well, you've got old conditioned thinking from the mind that even in your working in the now, those friggin' things are back there somewhere in the Akashic Records going, remember chocolate? Remember the heart cupcake? You know, that sort of thing. Mmm. Ooh. Give me some coconut milk. Ugh. What a starch difference between synthetic crap and chemistry and natural stuff. This is obvious. It's surprised words are even needed. You know what I mean? Anyway, thanks for the coconut, Jermaine. <laughs> mm. I'm still sucking on that thing. Anyway, I want to get to some Q's and A's and try to you know, help some more of you guys get on down the road here. And I appreciate you taking your precious time and helping yourselves and getting yourselves to Wellville because it, it's not difficult. Sometimes some of you are having some ups and downs that are hard, but a lot of you are, are sailing your ships pretty good. 
And it's a, I just, the, the, the wellness factor that I see here is incredible, but I've seen this in my practice all my life. And that's what makes me enthusiastic. I have never once lost my zeal and my love and excitement for healing and health and God, not for a fraction. Whether I can always be 100% fruitarian or not, no, but you know what? That's okay with me. I'm okay at, 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 the, at the level. And I, I, but I got to tell you this, and I, at the same time, don't take me wrong, but Focus now on that. Get through this. Because as you grow spiritually and you start opening and you start seeing, your world will change. I'm just saying, your world will change. And so, try to dig in and go for it as much as you can. And then, get away from so much attention physically. You know, this is what happened to me. I, I, I got so body conscious I've told you this before. I could feel spirit flowing through me, the prana, the life force. I, I could feel my blood moving. I mean, I got so into the body. I said, I got to stop. I got to get out of here. And so as you grow, the body, okay, you get it halfway healthy or as healthy as you want. To, and that's important that you get your health back. But then incorporate that as much as you can as a way of life. And that's what I've tried to do. I still have a very high level of raw. But I still have some cooked foods now and then. And I don't sweat over it. I, I, I really, I, 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 there's so many things I've got in motion and I'm doing on all kinds of levels that I don't want to come down here and say, okay, I'll focus on this level only and then I'll be, you know, uh-uh. Uh so anyway, let's get to some of these questions and answers. But I want to thank you again for, for taking the time to work on yourselves and to grow spiritually. You will never regret one moment of this. And those of you that, that wander away, you'll be back. Because I, there, I, I've been through all kinds of supplements and all kinds of things, and I've told you this. I was into the carry reams. I was into the blood, urine, saliva, and hair analysis. I was, I was into all types of chemistry and buying into the medical thinking and things like this until I had to pull away to get a unconditioned view of what really exists. And so you'll see that as we come around here and you come around here, you'll swing, you'll go, I see now. Okay. Oh, let me see. This is Gordana. Is that right? Gordana? Gordana, maybe? Dear Dr. Morris, I am fruit fasting from January 1st, oh, uh, 14, from the very second that <laughs> luckily bumped into your link. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. And I feel better, but it is yesterday that I heard you say that my Case length will not move without your supplements, so please could Chris mail me with instructions on how to buy uh No, 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 no. You don't have to move with raw foods. Well, you know, that's a good question. There are some uh, people whose kidneys and adrenals are so bad that you're right. They're just, it's just foods is not doing it. That's the problem. Uh, and you'll know. You know, if you're if you if you're tight with money and you're hitting the the fruitarian and the water fasting and you're digging in that way, keep watching that kidney filtration because it's possible you can get that and go right along without buying the herbs. I'd say those are going to be the strong constitution people and those that lymphatic systems are more subacute. But when you get into the chronic levels of stuff, man, no, 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 bring your friends because it's just it, it, it'll save you a lot of time. And a lot of anxiety and going, I'm not getting better. I'm getting better slowly or slower than I would like. So it's just uh, tools, you know, tools to help. Uh, okay, I am female 63. I have a hard lymph ball under my right arm. Okay, so I'll tell you something. You, you definitely want this out of there. Honey, so you want to put either castor oil or some type of oil on there to kind of loosen it up a little bit if you can, if it's real hard, but that's that right kidney. So you really want to hit the kidney formulas hard. You want to go two kidneys, one capsule, one, one tincture, 
two lymph addicts, one one lymph addict, which is a uh, a capsule, and then the lymph nodes are all liquids. You know, again, just clean up your bowels and everything like we talk about here. Uh, but you want to get that lymph node the size of a chicken egg two or three years. Uh-uh. I don't know what's going on with your right breast but or your right arm, but you, you going to want to deal with this because it even could reach up in the neck or uh, uh, severe low back pain hardly can move. So what's the correlation, correlation guys, with this case? Hard, hard egg-sized lymph node and then lower back so bad. There you go. Right, I mean, the, the, the tension goes right to your kidney, sweetheart. I mean, that lower back, L4 and L5 specifically, but that lower back, that's generally the kidneys. And so there you go. Your kidneys are the filtering organs for your lymph, and your right kidney, not a happy camper, not filtering, and there you got a hard egg. Uh, let me see, chronic fatigue, okay, she's always exhausted. There you go, there's the adrenals on top of the kidneys right there. I must take two naps during the day so that I can do any work. So her adrenals are basically crashed and burned right there. High blood pressure, sometimes 180 over 110. Now, let's look at this. We know immediately that when you're looking at blood pressure, you're looking at the systolic is the adrenal glands, diastolic is the kidneys. So, your diastolic is 110. I don't care much about the systolic because I know that diastolic is cramping that adrenal, shoving that systolic up and overstimulating that adrenal. So, high blood pressure. But here's a key word this lady said. See if you can figure this out. High blood pressure, sometimes 180 over 110. Sometimes. Okay, so here's the problem. Sometimes means she has flipping blood pressure to me. She's not saying that, but she had blood pressure swings on her. So where would we be with her problem now? We definitely be at the kidneys, but because of that and that egg, we're probably impacted lymphatically in the cerebellum, which is the parasympathetic injection to the central nervous system. And here you go, you have that swinging 110. That means you got a lot of pressure. I don't know if you have stiff necks and stuff, but with this lymph node up here, I can't imagine you're not being stiff and tight all the way down the back here. Uh, use medication suppressed to 120 over 80 many decades back. Took no chemo. So many decades back, took no chemo. What does that mean? You know, so here here we've got extreme kidney problem right here. Do you email me? I want to, oh, I'm going to show this to, uh, she's in uh, Serbia. Uh, uh, okay, so, but we've got to get this lymph node out of her. So, sweetheart, if you're listening to this, no milk, no dairy, get on the fruit if you can get fruit right now where you are and get on a high fruit diet and try to break this loose. Get these kidneys working and get your herbs. In a case like this one, guys, if she can afford it or even if we do the Fab 4 or Fab 5, whatever, um, we really need to, she needs to get this lymph node done because she hadn't mentioned breast. She just said no chemo. So that, that's a little raise of the eyebrow. What, what else are you not saying here in this, this thing? So this would be important, um, uh, important to get done quick because you you you, you know, the, uh, an egg sized lymph node like that, not good. Okay, so I hope that helps you, sweetheart, but uh, try to get, definitely get that lymph node out of there. Get that drained, not cut out, but drained up. You got to get the kidneys up because here's a whole host of things this lady's going to go for. I mean, if she's that exhausted and the adrenals are that down, what's your concern? Two things, wouldn't you? The first one would be cholesterol plaquing, wouldn't it? So that's another big thing. If she adrenals are so low, she has to take two naps, then the chances of her cortisol levels and all, uh, that being really low is obvious. And therefore, she runs the risk of cholesterol plaquing because she has extreme acidosis with a lymph node like that. And as with what I t take to be swinging blood pressure, and there's not a medication that's going to take this. Matter of fact, you want to make sure that you stay at 120 over 80 because you could swing lower. But again, I... You know, just get in there, and when you start cleaning up those kidneys, and you start draining the cerebellum, and the blood pressure comes down, you've got to regulate your high blood pressure medication accordingly. If not, you could run yourself into serious hypotension, serious trouble, so you, you have to watch your blood pressures. Check both arms, by the way. Hey, Michael Post. 
Hey, Doc, out here in Japan, winter has been freezing. Ooh, I just wrote a, uh, I just wrote a protocol for a, a jet in Hong Kong. Like everywhere else, and there's some, we have some good clients in Hong Kong. Maybe you guys will get together. Uh, like everywhere else. Thanks. I know, man. Lots of love to you, too. I have been trying to catch a cold or the flu. Dang. You ain't caught it yet? The flu from my students, but haven't been able to. Isn't that? You know what? It's funny. When you don't know that these are important issues to go through when you're congested, you, you've, you, you, everybody hates getting them. But when you know that you're going to save some money and a lot of time having a good detox on nature... You try to have them, and when you go raw and on the herbs, it's hard to have them. <laughs> you get everything moving. The body doesn't feel a need to purge because everything seems to be taken care of, okay? So you don't get the purging. That's why I say my phone doesn't ring in the middle of the night as it used to because I tried to perfect this. I've tried to learn through the years the you know, the easier way to detox people. So one, it takes the stress from them, but two, it takes the, the major healing Christ syndrome away from them. And so I think we've done a pretty good job with that. Uh, in Asian countries, when people get sick or are afraid of getting sick, I know, they wear surgical masks. I know. Oh, if only they knew the truth. I know. I know. You know, culturing medium, baby. Uh, oh, I have some herbs coming my way and heal all tea and three lung tea for my girlfriend. I was wondering if you have ever had a client neti pot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely neti, pot, neti potted the three lung tea and, and, the, and the heal all tea. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I can't wait for spring. We get grapes from Peru. Ooh, I wonder if those are good. Uh, big black juicy ones. Anyway, thanks for every Oh, listen, Michael, thank you, my friend. Thank you much. You know, good job, you guys. You know, we're a good team, all of us and you guys. I think we do good. And I think, you know, we, without thinking, uh, the importance that we play in helping the world, you just can't underestimate that. I Just look around and see, just like you were saying, Michael, see the, see the decay of man and his health issues and the, and the stupid concepts and ideas that he's, he struggles with. Instead of just letting go and trying a robe of something new, people struggle. And that's just the conditioned mind. So we fight that. And so, oh, in this last video I did... Uh, I was talking to Juby about some question about teeth and all that. And I don't know how much I finished answering Juby on that. But I'll say this. Always check your saliva and your mouth about alkalinity. And I've said this on other videos here recently, so it's just being a little redundant on you. But get some baking soda, aluminum-free baking soda, or dark grapes. And if you're, if you're citrus fasting, then by all means, uh, follow it up with some alkalinity if you can check your pH. The true problem comes interstitially. The true problem of acidosis in the mouth comes interstitially. The saliva, the gums, when you get receding gums, you start to see your teeth, you're too acidic. Most of that actually is being robbed interstitially. And you made a good point, though, that once you're on that road, things could exacerbate that, and that's true. Uh, never, of course, I'll tell you this, I never lived exclusively on dates uh, to see what that might be like. But... Again, wash your mouth out with, with that if you feel the need to do that. Uh, the question of dried fruits and how uh, how good they are, I don't know. I love them all. And I think if you're having teeth problems, you need to look at your parathyroid gland. You need to look at your lymphatic system. You need to look at what's pulling the calcium out of you. It isn't sweet fruits. Calcium is in the, the same category as sugar, by the way, chemically. Hello, D. Morris. I need your help. Oh, what's this? Five years ago, I, I developed cystic pimple, which left me with hypertrophic scar near the uh, tip of my nose. Three years ago, nurse flattened it a little bit with a microdermabrasion procedure. 
Uh, well, it still bothered me. So, so month and a half ago, I decided to use castor oil on it. I massaged it with my fingers. Oil made scar both worse and better. <laughs> Interesting, huh? Therefore, I wanted to keep it within boundaries of scar. I massaged it with uh, Q-tip one night. Did not press hard, but tissue reacted badly. It swelled up, raised widen, and keeps widening every day. It has been mouth and scar in more spread than it was. I think I may have keloid. What would your advice? How can I get rid of this? Keloid on nose is nothing pretty. Yeah, I know. 23-year-old Lucas. Well, I'd go to my dermatologist and have him cut the tip of that. No, no. You know what? Think about this. Now, this is something I was wanted to talk to you guys about, too. Something that I've been thinking about through the years because it, it's another one of those things that you use castor oil, you use some type of, of high, um, high resolution oil like a, a olive oil or coconut oil. But particularly the castor oil is anti-inflammatory. Remember, oils tend to be anti-inflammatory. It's cholesterol and adrenal cortical steroids, that sort of thing, right? But when you put an oil on, you're, it's absorbing into where? interstitially. And if your interstitial chambers are already backed up lymphatically to get the scar tissue, see what I mean? It could be that you don't have any room for more people, more chemistry. And that has been my concern also with tumors and hardened things like this lady's lymph node. You know, but still, when you got a lymph node that hard, I would still do it because you've got to break that loose. The concern of an individual having a lymph node that hard too many years is atrophy of the lymph node, solidification and calcification of the lymph node. That's scary because, again, as some of you are finding out, that when you remove lymph nodes, the story isn't a pleasant one on the other side of that lymph node because then... 99.99999% of the time, there's a bunch of cells feeding their waste into, lymph, into the lymph node that was removed. Hence, lymphedema. And what amazes me is that we don't have more lymphedema in the head from tonsil removal. But if you'll notice now, we're dealing with so many throat cancers, throat tumors, brain tumors. I mean, from here up now, it's a nightmare. And it's even harder because cleaning up the teeth and cleaning up the head you know, I, we were talking about this probably a year or two ago about homeopathy and the view of, of uh, you know, uh, the healing is from the inside out, head down, and I disagree. Uh, healing is actually starts closest to the kidneys. As you start to open up the flow of the kidneys, anything close is starting to drain first, you know. It's just common sense. Your brain is not going to drain first when, you're, when your prostate or ovaries or uterus is, is right there. You, the, the body's not going to uh, drain up here through through all this solidified uh, lip vessels and, and lip nodes and, and all this stuff that's backed up before closer tissue is. That's ridiculous. So you're going to see as you increase drainage or filtration, you're going to see that closest. So these things that are furthest away are going to take some time to be well. If you have peripheral neuropathy or, or breaking down in the nerves from all the acidosis in the, in the lymph system out in the limbs, might take you a while to get that as opposed to what's closer to the kidneys. So it's just, you know what, it just depends on your eyes, what's genetically weak, which filters better because of that, faster because of that. And then remember in your genetic weaker areas, the lymph is already compromised twice as much. So those areas take a little longer to deal with. So it's, it's got all these things. But at least we know the path to the remedies and we can get there and we can do those things. Yes, we have t trouble. We have toughness on that road. Frustration sometimes on that road. It's still a road to Wellville. You want to make it a fun road to Wellville. You know, there's too much, uh, oh, he does this or he does No, it's too much of that. Drop on. This is a fun road. Respect each other. You guys on the Facebooks, respect each other, love each other. You're going to have new people come to it with attitudes way out there. And that's the problem. And this is something you healers have to brace for. Man's state of consciousness or states thereof. Because I tell you, you get people come to you and say, 
that's why I appreciate the, the beautiful, uh, from Jermaine, the beautiful uh, thank yous and stuff because we also have the other side, you know, people that are just pulling our teeth out because they're struggling and they make us struggle with them sometimes. And it's like, you know, we, you do your best. And I've talked to you healers before about this is that there's a certain bit of talk to the hand, the face isn't listening. Our job is to educate, to excite, to keep them excited. When your clients come back in, they rat it out a lot of times. They've been on raw, contrary to the conditioned thinking. And the older they are, the more years they've been conditioned to think. The more years their body's been acidic. So we've got all this, and they're conditioned from the earlier days, and some of these people just still don't get it. And yet, there's a lot of older people in their 60s and 70s and 80s, we get it. You know, so th there, there, there's all levels here, but some are going to pull on you emotionally, and that's why detachment, I, uh, I be a way shower, uh, teach what you know, but sorry, that's all I know. I can just, I can just tell you what I know, what I've seen, what we've been through. Outside of that, draw your own conclusions then. It's like no different than anything else. You wear the robe, you get on the bull, you lock yourself in and you ride it. If he doesn't agree with you and don't like it, go somewhere else. Trouble is, there's not too many places to go that's truly curative, truly offering you a remedy. Oh, situation. Let's see who this is. Patty. Hey, Patty. I am grateful for your videos. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Situation. Diagnosed one week after second birthday. Diagnosed one week after second birthday. She'd had a whole lot of sugar-related foods at her birthday party and also a lot of candy at Easter, which was right around that time. Now, let me guess before I read on. This is a little two-year-old loaded down with sucrose. Uh-oh. Because what are we going to find with a little two-year-old? Uh-huh. Adrenals. So, uh, complex sugar on top of adrenal weakness? Not good. All right, let's see. Parents both had poor diets prior to her conception due to eating processed foods, fast foods, fat restriction, sugar-free, etc. Poor diet during pregnancy, which not ate any fruits or vegetables, but took lots of vitamins, so-called healthy drink mixes. Oh. Oh, yeah, I got where you're coming from, Patty. Not good. A healthy drink mix. Let me see. We've got this. We've got chemistry from bags. You ever see chemistry from bags? I have a lot of supply houses that supply me with you know, chemistry, flax and, and slides and whatever I want. And I can buy calcium. I can buy anything I want. You can buy them in bags. I like them raw, baby. Right where everything is magnetically uh, exciting, that chemistry. Not from a 50-pound bag of calcium or phosphorus or zinc or iron. See what I mean? Now, toddler was breastfed, but when she went on solid foods, it was not a healthy diet. She eats much better now but still eats a lot of processed meats. How old is she? Hardly no vegetables, but does not does eat lots of organic fruits and eggs. No dairy, gluten-free, corn-free. Well, that's a little better. Yeah. Number one, it is po is it possible there is such a thing as a sugar overdose in triggering type 1 diabetes? No, not in triggering it, but definitely, well... And let me let me back up. The weakness is already there in this young one, and, and and I don't know how old this one is at this time, but it's enough to say that. You know, you're looking at the beta cells, whether you're looking at a neurological type one or you're looking at an actual beta cell genetic weakness type one. So you just have to go in and work on those. But that yes, that sugar, that amount of sugar, just exposed what was what the body couldn't do because of the compromised genetics in those tissues, whether, again, a neurological type 1 or a beta cell type 1. So, yeah, that sugar just said, hello, 
you know, I got this lady once in here, and she was a uh, she was type two though, and we got her adrenals cleaned out and her blood sugar is normal. And she said, "Well, how do I know?" And I said, "Go buy a piece of cake." So she went and bought her a great big piece of cake like that, and uh, didn't even budge your sugars much. And I said, "Now you're good," and she never had a problem since. But that was that's just type two. Type one, boy, some of them are tough, and we we're talking about that yesterday uh, on a video and about Marcy being the type one. Uh, 35 years she's been on insulin. So, and I've said this, when you're 35 years on insulin, you're 35 years on a cortical steroid. For those of you that have been on uh, hydrocortisone or some type of cortisone cream and you know what it did to your adrenals, imagine being 35 years on it. And a lot of these type 1s spend a lot, most of their years on, on insulin. Well, they've destroyed the beta cell's ability to, to manufacture insulin. So this is a long process of awakening up the dead, but it can be done. And that's the point. Is if you sit there and you're always bitching about other people and, and worrying about other people, you need to refocus the finger back to the self. So Juby, you need to really get into with that and get understand all that and understand the limp and just go into that if you really get into that or no if you don't. But I don't know, I don't know what to say about it other than that. Type 1 sometimes, you always have to work harder than type 2. There's no question about that. And you have different levels. Some type 1s are a piece of cake and other ones are like pulling your teeth. The longer they've been on insulin, obviously, they've got major problems. They have to rebuild glands. At the same time, they have to keep taking insulin. And they're fight, people fight the same thing we all do. That's the thing. If you get a purist on here making accusations, please go somewhere else because, you know, it's just not good for you to create the karma for you because your test will come. That's the problem with judging. The trouble with judging is your test is going to come on your judgmental attitude and it's going to hit you hard too. And it's like, I don't judge. I don't care because I don't want the karma. Thank you very much. I love you all. Perfect. And that's the way it should be. Who cares? We're all brothers and sisters. We're all one struggling to get well and to be happy, but to have God awareness too. Don't forget that little thing, to be awake again to who you really are. That's the key. Health is to get your body healthy, get your body, and you want to tear into that, absolutely. But if that's the only goal you have, okay, but mine is not. I want the God state. I don't want to come back to this place. Possible triggers. Not really a trigger. You have to look at genetic condition of cells here. While digging their backyard uh, pool, they ran across a huge oil slick. <laughs> but the pool was still built over it. Oh, look at that. It looked like used motor oil had been dumped. Truckers used to park their rigs around the area. Well, I'm saying so much about the oil. You know, when they looked at what the oil did in the Valdez, I had... Uh, an in-law that worked for the uh, government that, that that was his job was to go and retest all the water and the 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 soil and all that to make sh you know to keep a track on it. I think he worked for the EPA or something. I can't remember, but he said they were shocked at what the oil actually spawned. It actually was rich. This is rich carbon, and it actually instigated tremendous growth. So I don't know, you know, I, I don't know where that is. It's the contaminant. It's the um, the um, disbursement that they used. And Jesse Ventura, I just watched his uh, his uh, show on that again, and it, it just got the arsenics and the lead. I mean, the contaminant alone. And BP kept spilling that, using that. And I, it's just, uh, there need to be people go to jail for that. They contaminated the Gulf for years and years and years. And people are eating the sea food out of it now. And this contaminant was so toxic. It's just unbelievable. And they, this show was really good, though. Anyway, also, uh, they also live across the street from high-tension power lines. Uh, and they have smart meters on their house. And the next-door neighbors faces their meters. So there's doubled the exposure. Is it possible these EMFs uh, contribute to her getting diabetes? No, I wouldn't think that. But 
I don't think they make it any better either. I think that obviously it breeds more inflammation, which shuts down things even more. So if anything, it's contributing to the decay of the cell and especially the genetic weaker cells. So in that way, you could say absolutely. Remember what the uh, Fox News just had this yesterday that uh, now they've correlated lap, putting lap computers on your lap with uh, men becoming sterile from it. And I thought, whoa, I have to look at that study and see what that is. But, you know, th this is serious stuff. And they talked about, and I thought about this for years, that, our, that our, our frequencies are getting full. There's radio, TV on about every frequency. There's The governments, of course, have been sending stuff over the wire, if you know what I mean. So, I mean, we're inundated in our... In our auric, we're inundated with, with garbage and, and, and um, unbalanced energies and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's a mess. No question, it's a mess. But you're not from this world. You're not a part of this world, except you have a body here. So you get the body as healthy as you can. You know to detox radiation and everything out. You guys know the secrets of wellness. And you just get your body as well as possible. And you become God-absorbed. And you become the way shore of life. There's nothing any greater than to help others. Because as you help, you get. God gives you more, but it gives itself more. Uh, mineral deficiencies seem to be a cause of so many diseases. Scratch the word diseases out. I'll say this. Malabsorption and, and digestive problems is a huge source of mineral deficiencies. Matter of fact, the predominant reason of mineral deficiencies is malabsorption and what else? Weak adrenals. Why? Because the adrenals produces 24, 25 mineral cortical steroids that are essential to iron, zinc, selenium, magnesium utilization. So when the adrenals are down, you're not absorbing nutrition, you're not digesting your food down in the first place, you've lost all over. Remember we talk about digestion, absorption, utilization, and elimination. You've got to look at these. You've got to look at these four processes before you can even think deficiency. When you correct these problems, then you can think deficiency. Of course, those of us who know chemistry a little bit look at the food and go, well, the food isn't even good. And then they, this person has malabsorption and, and a weak adrenal on top of that, so there's no brainer. I'll tell you what's interesting, and this was a lady, she's a, an older lady, and we were talking, and she said, my God, she said, well, I don't know, she, she was probably in her 60s, I think. Maybe she was in her 50s, not, maybe she wasn't that old. But anyway, we were talking about this, and she said, you know, I can't believe how little of food I need to live on. I said, well, you know, I learned the same thing. I said, I, I'm a big guy, and I said, I don't eat that much. I rarely eat dinner. I never have breakfast except for some fruit most of the time. If I go out and do something real bad, it's only a cinnamon pancake or something when I just am feeling so gnarly or something, but that's rare. And so, you know, my big deal is lunch, and most of those are salads. And sometimes I stray. I had Indian food the other day, and it was like, oh, that killed me. But, oh, it was nirvana going down, but it wasn't so good. She made me vegetable korma on the buffet, and I'm going, yeah. It was hard on you, though. But it is what it is, and I'd rather see people in balance then people so strict, they start uh, uh, getting opinions and, uh, and, and gossiping and, 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 and backbiting others because that's bad karma. So, just like you say with zinc, uh, magnesium and stuff, not, that's adrenal glands. So think about proper digestion and absorption. So you're going to go into this girl, I don't know how old she is now, and you go in and you clean her up. You're going to go into the pancreas, and I would probably use a glandular for the pancreas. If not, you want to use our pancreatic herbal formula, get into the pancreas, and start building that pancreas up. But what is the number one reason why most people lose tissue, the function of tissue or cells? What's the one, number one reason most people lose the functionability of a cell? This is the price is right. You get a brand new... <laughs> now... It's the lymphatic system. There's no other system that's so suppressive. Now, you could put something in the blood that can hyperstimulate something. Absolutely, like iodine or something like that. 
but reality speaks and, and of course if you did that it would end up in the lymph system anyway and so that's the problem is the great lymphatic system and that's the one we have to focus on if you want to find Wellville you can focus on the other stuff all you want they come in here by the groves with all the minerals and vitamins and digestive enzymes and probiotics and MSM and a cell life and all this crap like that that's man-made and they still have their problems and I'm saying well why are you in seeing me for if you've been on all this good stuff and it's that good and it, it gives you remedy that's what I'm saying I can see the frustration of the medical community on one side I have to admit and that is that vitamins and minerals have some curative properties I, I have to admit that it probably would be a tongue twister even though we're dealing in people that use deadly pharmaceuticals that have opinions like that but it, it is true you want your chemistry synergistically bound like this where everybody's together mm. and tastes good too oh, uh, it's just hard to get these foods into her diet and liquid supplements that have the needed minerals I wouldn't I would use the herbs specifically for the tissues you need because they're full of minerals. That, but people don't understand the herbs, they're full of the minerals you're looking for and the vitamins you're looking for and the flavonoids and the astringents and the chimerins and the uh, uh, alkaloids and the tannins. You can go on and on and on. They all have them. So the herbs are full of chemistry, but you're using herbs for specific tissues. That's the beauty of this. The beauty is we actually have a tool that we can use designed for the pancreas by the Creator. I don't think man can do better. I don't care how big the pharmaceutical company is or the lab is and how smart the chemist is. Sorry. And it's electrified by being synergistically bonded with the enzymes and everything else. It's a living, breathing. That's People don't realize we're, we're energy beings. This is the only body that's so inert and chemical. But we're energy beings in all the other bodies. So this is, it's a little bit tough. I refuse to give up. I am searching for a cure for type 1 diabetes. Patty. Patty, don't be looking in the wrong places. There's always a cure for all of that. You clean and restore. You rebuild. You know, these are genetic weaknesses in kids when it gets into the type 1s, rebuild them. The body can rebuild itself. you got to get them on a better diet. You can't say, I'm going to use a supplement. And even though that, little, that girl eats like crap, I, there's something out here I can buy that will fix type 1. Your, your, your thinking is messed up there a little bit. That, that doesn't exist. You can chase these rainbows throughout the world. And you're still not going to go anywhere because they're not based on any factual thing. You know, you're, you're looking at the wrong side, the wrong area for, for the remedy. You're not looking right at the causative factors, right at the tissue, right at, at nutrition. At, remember, nutrition is only a third of the game, we'll call it. What's well, two-thirds of the game? The rest of it. Elimination. Why is the lymph system so much bigger than the blood system? Because it is a major, major system of the body that is wrapped in your main immunity. Huge! And uh, why wouldn't that be the one that's considered? That's the one that's left out. Not from us though, right? Hi Robert, first thing I wanted to say I'm a huge fan of your work. Oh, thanks. Uh, mate, I'm going to be coming from Australia for your course in October. I heard you guys are kicking butt over in Australia. I, I heard a little, a little bird come whispering in my ear and said, you Australian uh, uh, guys are ripping it up. I'm a blogger for, uh, I don't know if I should mention that, our communities suffer from, oh man, listen to this, our communities suffer from chronic body odor condition which destroys any chance of leading a normal life. So, you know, when you get a body odor, no, none there, oh, it smells like coconut. That's what you should smell like if this is what you're eating is a coconut, you should smell like a coconut. I'm telling you, you'll see that. You get so clean and you get up there. So then if you smell, what foods make you smell? Foods that putrefy. Now what might they be? Protein. 
So if you can smell yourself, that's a problem. And I, I can't tell you how many people come up and talk with me and I can smell decay in their breath. Their whole bowels are full of decay. Because remember, white flour is a glue. A gluten is a glue. Even though it's a protein, it's also a glue. You glue these, these proteins in the bowel wall. You, uh, you, you have bowel pockets. You can store proteins in bowel pockets. You absorb these putrefactive proteins into the body. You have them all through you. And, and, and people stink like them. So th most people's bowels are in a state of decay. Their lymph systems are in a state of decay and they stink. So you get everything sweating, you get everything moving, you get go into those bowels, you, you get stomach and bowel, the lymphatic capsules, you're using the GI broom, you're cleaning, you're getting the kidneys to filter, you're moving all these acids and proteins out of the body, and then you start smelling sweet. And that's how you do it, because that's the only way you can do it. Because if you've antiperspirants, notice why antiperspirants were linked to cancer? Because they suppress your lymph node filtration. They suppress lymph filtration. Oh, that's cute. You know, I mean, these things, we, they don't think about. Oh, odor, we need, to, we need to put something over that. We need to stop you from sweating. Yeah, and you need to put me in a jail cell and take away the key, too? You know, this is the problem. <laughs> You know, you have to be careful, so careful. And if you can smell yourself, get your body cleaned out because that's decay. And it can be decay of your own body. You know, people so acidic, what decays the body? Acids. So you could be decaying in your body, in your GI tract. So get, get in there and start cleaning it out, guys, because you want to smell like the food you're eating. The odors are relentless, and there's only been a small number, maybe 5% of us, who have been able to turn this condition around and move on with life. You all can do it. You all can do it. Keep digging in. You guys are super great over there. You guys can dig in and get this done and clean your bodies out. This is the lymph system. This is the sewer. You're smelling your sewer system. And that includes the GI tract with that. So you really want to get in and clean this out. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a situation. Remember I told you, you know, you, the leaky gut can be a real serious problem, and that's, uh, that's a whole different uh, ballgame there. The odors can be a constant fecal urine garbage smells. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Food smells, even gas smells that, that push up uh, the body at any time, but are more prevalent at times of anxiety or when the body heats up. Yeah, absolutely. You start sweating, you start moving these things around. But listen, guys, you'll get this out. You dig into the body, dig deep, get this all cleaned out, get these body odors out of you. And that's a must because either you're, it's part of the protein and decayed life you've lived in the past or it's your body decaying from the acids. Either one isn't acceptable and you've got to get it out of there. And keep detox, get those kidneys filtering and keep moving that lymph and get into a sauna and sweat your butt off. You know, start opening all this, open everything up and get these acids and these, this putrefaction out of you. You're smelling, you are actually smelling just what it is. You know, most of the time we're experiencing truth. We're experiencing just what it is. Just because the mind can't understand sometimes or, or you understand what's going on, you're always experiencing truth in real time. Some of our community test positive to, oh my God, <laughs> known as fish odor. I'll put it that way. Yeah, nasty fish too. That's uh, I don't, Man, your body can, if you eat fish, you can smell fish. You're going to smell like the food you're eating. I don't know how to put it to you. And those of you guys that get cleaner will notice it when you eat it. You'll notice it almost immediately when you eat it. I mean, years ago, I had some... Uh, Meat at time. I started eating a little meat when I went down with my uh, with the quinine poisoning because I needed the neurotransmitters, and I could just start to smell some body odor. And of course, then I had to get away from that because I, thought, but I needed those neurotransmitters. Uh, syndrome, even though most sufferers don't always have fish odors, it doesn't matter. I, you know, it's, it's easy to tell what that is. A lot of our community share the same symptom, but come up negative when tested. You can't test for this. I mean, this is your lymph system. This is, you know, your body odors. This is, you're not, you know, the sad thing, guys, is you can get blood. 
putrefactive smell of the blood. The blood putrefactive anyway is as soon as something starts dying, you can start to smell blood. But you know what? Your blood also has to deal with with this nasty putrefactive animal meats and eggs and fish and stuff like that. And so your blood can get tainted real bad too. I'm telling you, it's just uh, uh, we're a mess. We're a mess. Uh, let me see here. This is, I can't even pronounce this word, it's about a mile long. Occurs when, as fish odor occurs when sufferers uh, lack a live enzyme to digest the TMA compound, which causes smells to build up in the blood. I'm sorry. I, you know, this, is from, this is from meat eating. And eggs and dairy products. Anything that's an animal product that is protein rich is putrefactive. Uh, nuts and stuff, even when they, they go through their cycle of putrefaction and breaking down, it, it, it's not the same. Uh, so, uh, meat, animal tissue, but even your own body breaking down is going to stink. Just saying. And that's the smell you don't want. Your own smell of your own death and decay. You know, it's not about digestive enzyme, the TMA compound, which causes smells. Anything smells, it's decay. Even, even, uh, 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 fermentation. You know, even, even fruit can really stink, but not like putrefaction. Not like putrefaction. That's the worst. I personally don't buy this theory. Thank you. Yeah, at all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, since the odors are from the bacteria and the waste that, get, that gets into the sufferers. But these gas smells are obviously the most disruptive uh, to one's social life. Boy, you, you know, no one's ever asked this, I think, on YouTube. And I'm so happy you did. I mean, we've touched on it a couple of times on a couple of videos about body odors. And I've told you you're going to smell like the food you're eating. But we really haven't touched too much about why people stink. And uh, the, you can tell just... Like some of you on the wall, you'll be able to get that. All of you will be able to get that out of you if you can get all do that. But you got to clean your lymph system because that's a sign that one, you're very acidic. There's decay in your body, whether it's from the animal food you ate previously or whether it's from your own decay. You want to get it all out of you, and it's not difficult. Uh, just have to dig and keep cleaning. You know, most people are harassed daily, have lost jobs, broken relationships. It sounds like a mess. I've never heard that, man, in terms of a whole community like that suffering from that. So it's interesting that might be interesting to see if there's some type of, uh, I don't know, you know, it's obviously that community deals with a lot of lymphatic problems more than others. Maybe I don't know. We have even had a few suicides over this. Isn't that sad? That's friggin' sad. Somebody has to kill themselves over that. And it's not difficult to remedy. Some of our community argue the gas smell comes out of the anus, but I'm of the strong opinion they're released from the skin. I agree with you. They can be released from the anus, but it comes from the skin, under arms, absolutely. All the lymph nodes, for sure. G groin, under arms, under breasts, mm -hmm. all those kind of places. We ladies know what I'm talking about. Uh, leaky gut, there is that smell. Uh, that's the one you don't want. That's the one that will kill you quick. Either that or they push out the lungs. True. Uh, my condition personally coincides, but it comes right up the esophagus, right up from the, the GI tract. My condition personally coincides with a chronic irritable bowel, brain fog, memory loss. Okay, so look at this. Here you go. He's got uh, chronic irritable bowel. So you want to get in with the GI brain. Want to really clean that out. But remember the lymph system in the wall. Interstitial lymphatic constipation. Uh, you want to go after that. You know, with the kidneys and the adrenals. Get in there. The brain fog means that you're backed up already up here. Now you could have high candida too. So you want to get on parasite and you'll clean that out. But I'll get upper circ brain and nerve. Get that brain fog out of there. Get those those synapses turned back on there. Memory loss exactly. We don't want upper circ of brain and nerve will help you immensely with that. Food allergies, well, you know, that's lymphatic. Headaches, that could be stomach, that could be sinus, that could be thyroid. A chronic fatigue, obviously, is adrenals, could be a little thyroid in there as well. Restless legs, 
Definitely lower back, kidneys, uh, nervous system, teeth grinding. Uh, different thoughts on that. Uh, nervous system down, uh, worms. You always want to deworm yourself. Hair loss will go back to uh, uh, brain fog and memory loss. Uh-uh. We don't want to tie those three because that will breed Alzheimer's and dementia in your future. No. No, you want to stop and get this all cleaned out, my friend. Get yourself sweating even of the head and then start draining and get those sinuses drained. Um, and jaundice, just to name a few symptoms. So, you got to go into that liver, clean out the gallbladder of the stones and the liver of the stones, get the interstitial areas of the liver clean. Well, that can't come clean until the interstitial areas of the colon. Well, that can't come clean until the kidneys, what? Start filtering. And they can't start filtering until the adrenals will agree that they'll help do it. I have managed to get uh, mine, the majority, under control through juice fasting, colonics, and changing my diet, but everybody else has to do the same, man. I found that uh, mainstream medicine, ABX, failed me. I'm keen to hear your theories on these uh, body odor conditions, and particularly the one that suffers from leaky gas. Well, again, you remember there's a lot, get a picture of the eyes, but there's a lot of sulfur that uh, people use. And this town could have had a physician that overused sulfur drugs. I mean, is it anything could be. It could be a sulfur town. You could have a, a mill or a factory in the town that's emitting sulfur gas. Uh, all kinds of things could be involved in that where this is a sulfur smell as well like a rotten egg smell cause gassy bloaty stuff like this and you're going to have people in the town that have that anyway on top of the other stuff so you have to look you might have a source of, uh, of a manufacturing there that's manufacturing something that that chemistry off we have uh, um, Tropicana not too far up the road and it smells like burnt sugar cookies but some of those smells you get in, you smell them for a long time because remember, if you smell something, you're eating it. You're smelling actual chemical molecules. So when you smell it, you're eating it. And that's the problem. <laughs> that's the big problem. Uh, thanks for your time, mate. Oh, you bet, Jordan. Love you, man. And love all you Australian guys and gals. You guys are good people. I have some good stuff about you guys. Hmm. Rana? E. Ras? Ras? Rana? Hello, Dr. Morris. This is uh, R A N A. Rana? Stay. Stay, Monsieur Coconut. The girl who shadowed you last April. Oh, yeah. Hi, sweetheart. I do remember you, absolutely. I hope you are well. I miss sitting next to you. Uh, I smile when I remember those times. That was fun. I remember now. My question is about hepatitis C. A relative has been diagnosed with hep C a few years ago and would like to know if there is a way to heal it herself from it. Please let me know your thoughts on that. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Thanks, sweetheart. I always enjoy you guys sitting in. We always have a lot of fun. Hep C. I want you to think about hepatitis in general and think about interstitial lymphatic constipation because you always have to deal with the lymph system in the liver and gallbladder. That's where you're going to see an increase of liver enzymes. You're not going to see increase of liver enzymes when you have a, a viral load because virals are pretty much antigens. Uh, they might spawn inflammation because they're a form of protein, but as a rule, they act more as a um, an antigen. And the only thing I can say to that is that your immune cells sometimes needs a signal to uh, deal with cells that have been damaged or weakened, and that signal comes from an antigen or viral. You can have high viral loads and never have what I call attachment. Or you can have high viral loads with attachment. We talked about this a few videos ago about the difference between HIV and AIDS, hep C and hepatitis and stuff like this. So you have to take a look at her and look at her eyes and see because they'll scare someone that has high viral loads into needing a liver transplant when their liver enzymes and the liver is in pretty good shape. And yet there's uh, others with a lot of inflammation in the liver from the lymph system and acidosis that also have high viral loads. 
and then they really have some problems there. So, it's all fixable. We have hep C, cirrhosis, liver cancers here all constantly. It's the one thing you can bet on that's out there prevalently, and hep C is so prevalent now it's not even funny. But these are viral loads, and viral loads can be detoxed out of your body. I don't know how you get rid of viral loads except through detoxification, to tell you the truth. Never seen anybody do it. But detoxification takes care of the the job quite aptly. And you're going to clean the liver out doing that. You're going to reduce the inflammation if her liver enzymes are elevated. So you want to look to see if she has just a viral load or whether she has elevated liver enzymes. That's A-S-T-A-L-T or S-G-O-T, right? And alkaline phosphatase. Those are all together on a blood workup. And that's your liver enzymes. Now, alkaline phosphatase can be bone or kidneys as well, but still, that's that's a good a little look. If your alkaline phosphatase was up and your liver enzymes were down, then you suspect bone or kidneys. And if your kidney creatinine was up and your alkaline phosphatase was up, that'd be a problem. And but if you have a problem, how do you fix it? You dig in. First of all, you change the number one cause of all our problems is what you eat, drink, breathe, and what you put on your skin. Stop and take a look at what you're bringing and how you're bringing in chemistry into your body that is not healthy chemistry. And anything man-made, question it before you consume it. Anything God-made, enjoy it. Most of the things that are toxic or uh, strong for a person, we don't use in commercial business. So... Yeah. So start with what you eat, drink, breathe, and what you put on your skin. If you can't eat it, don't put it on your skin. So you want to look at all this chemistry and as much from nature as possible, 100% if possible. So this is why we like the fruits, the berries, and the melons, and the coconut. You know, this is what we want to bring into the body here for our for our energetics and and the, and to to buddy up with the consciousness of the cells and convince them to go up. You're as much involved in, 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 in awakening as you are awakening yourselves. I can't hardly read this one. That came off, man. I can't hardly read this. Is a real fine. So forgive me here for, for getting down, but sometimes Chris gives them to me and they're just so small I can't even hardly read them, even with these readers on. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, I'm in the UK. I'm 66 years old. I have been raw vegan, high fruit, 30 years. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty good. If you've been that raw for 30 years, I commend you. Uh, I, I've been raw all my life, but not 100%. Uh, from, from the age 20 on, 21 on, I've been high raw, but not 100%. I was 100%. I mean, I've been 100% off and on for, for all these years. So there's times I'll go for a year raw, and there's times I will go a year with some cooked. I mean, it just depends or if I'm traveling, or what the what the gupa is, it just depends, you know, what what what's what's up. Whether I'm in court fighting with these corrupt federal judges and lawyers that all need to go to jail, I'm sitting there in front of a corrupt judge, knowing he's friggin' corrupt as all get out. And what remedy am I going to get in front of a corrupt judge? This is why Obama's writing laws as he wants because he knows it's so corrupt. He owns almost everybody now, so. Pretty much is no one's going to stop him. The Supreme Court went off their rocker, so they're they're no more reliable. They're as corrupt as everyone else now. So we have no real honesty and lawyers and judges anymore in America. So we're going down. It won't be long. You're going to see a, a war here. And I'm telling you, you they're planning on it. I can see where the government is planning on it and probably want it. They, we wouldn't keep going like this if you didn't want it. But it's coming. That that uh, Texas judge was right on, in my opinion. All right. Now, very fit until these last few months started getting hoarse last year, short of breath. Ooh. Now, you could, I want you to observe, if you're doing all raw and everything, you've got to make sure you're washing everything and you're not bringing in too many pesticides into your world. Because these pesticides, herbicides, are neurotoxins, and they can make you short of breath after a while. And uh, especially if they, you, they absorb in the gut wall, this is part of the autonomic, they can make you short of breath. The other side of this is going to be your adrenals because that's what controls breathing is your adrenals, your autonomic nervous system. Low adrenals, you can't, you just, you can't take that deep breath. 
And that actually can come from the, from the stomach and the, the, the uh, autonomic ganglia, in my opinion. The stomach, in my opinion, solar plexus, all tied to the seat of the autonomic. And, uh, you know, when you have uh, inflammation or acidosis uh, in the wall of the stomach or uh, ulceration of the stomach from low, hydro, uh, low uh, bicarbonate in the pancreas or whatever, then you're going to get it. Shortness of breath, a neurological heart rhythms, uh, arrhythmias. Uh, had had a bad cold previously. Throat went into spasms. Sometimes a little blood in saliva. It sounds like you have some decay going on or a lot of inflammation, my friend, interstitially. And you know what? This this brings me up to another thing, Matt. Because we change our diet. And we do, uh, let's say, a 100% raw diet, right? And let's say that out of that 100% raw diet, you're doing about 10, 15, maybe 20% fruits and the rest vegetables. You are going to start feeling a little better, but it won't take long and that'll cap. For me, I didn't have really any health problems, so it was all energetic to me. I didn't see that, but I've watched that in my clientele for years, and I've, I've seen how that is. Um, now, I feel it. I, I, I know the difference between a salad and a fruit in my energy, and, and of course in my digestive process and everything else. And the thing is, is that you've got to realize just being a raw foodist, you know, these people are jealousing people for not being purists and things like this. They don't get it. This isn't just about raw foods. You've got to go in and rebuild, clean and rebuild the human body. This isn't just about eating raw. You've got to go in. This is a good example here with Matt, who's been fairly raw for such a long time, and he's still having problems. And it shows he's not filtering yet, even being a raw foodist, because he's backed up interstitially in the lymph system in his neck. And he's getting some blood when he coughs up some mucus, which means he's highly acidic and his little capillaries are bleeding real easily there. And probably lost some calcium, so you might have some, some hardening or stenosis of the throat in some place or another. But keep going. Now, let, let yourself have a real sore throat. Now, even if it gets sore and you, and, and, and you can't talk, get the heal all tea and gargle with it. Hold it in your mouth. Uh, or the three lung tea, you can use that. Keep high up on fruits. You need to detox. But get those kidney and adrenals up, my friend, because that shortness of breath is either coming from the stomach or the adrenals. Now, barring that we're, we're excluding neural toxins from that picture, we can bring that in that picture as well on top of a weak adrenal and kidney and show that just exacerbates everything else. So it could be you're losing your adrenals over time just because you just didn't get to these higher levels of detox. That's what I'm saying. I'm about detoxification and regeneration. Outside of that, people are going to live their lives as they're going to live their lives. And you can't worry about it as healers because it'll take your joy away. You got to keep your joy and your happiness. And by the way, and I appreciate the comment by one of you beautiful souls on this, uh, these comments to me about the fun. Thank you for that comment. You know, sometimes I get ratted out or I get in a hurry trying to go through these questions fast and stuff. But let me say this. You want to have fun. You know, no matter what, you want to have fun, enjoy yourself, enjoy the universe, enjoy the planet. You know, the negative is a negative, the positive is a positive. You learn what's up, you learn the game, you learn the game of food, you learn all this, you work it, but you separate yourself from it. There's your creation out there. You're here. You're, you're dwelling in God awareness. You're enjoying. Your, your observation already knows, sees that's how you're experiencing. Actually, you, some of you will see that your experiences will change from being overly physical to being aware. And that's what happened to me, too. I, I went from being over physical to just being, I didn't need to go jump and, and, and surf in the water because I already had that experience. I, I, I could watch others and enjoy it completely. I, I was basking in the allness of consciousness. I didn't want to get into an activity that would bring me fo bring my focus away from more of a 360 down to a smaller focus. And you're going to see that with all of you guys. You're going to happen with that way. And that's what you want to do is keep your keep 
matter, energy, space, and time, duality outside of yourself. Observe your own creation so you can augment it and change it so you can get out of here when it's your time. And then you can have some fine journeys in the, in the interim. Now, uh, had had a bad, okay, uh, throat went into spasms. You might get the antispasmodic, a sense gargle, uh, muc uh, let me see here, but not in mucus, Doc said, Doc said asthma, eh, that's worse than that. I disagree. I mean, you might have asthma, but again, what is asthma? All right, it's a neurological weakness to the lungs that comes from the adrenal glands, and you could have a lot of congestion in the lungs as well, no question. Definitely have it in the throat, but this is acidosis in the throat. This is not coming out of your lungs. This is in your voice box. It's in your throat. You want to get that out of there. There's so many throat cancers and tumor stuff right now. Get that out of there, my friend. But I didn't take any medication or Ventolin. Or, unfortunately, I didn't understand detox years ago. Lost a lot of teeth. Yeah, see, that's what I was, we were just talking about teeth uh, earlier, and that's what it, all that lymph just chews up your friggin' teeth. Chewed up mine, you know, and it's like, holy crap. I started to get a little bit better teeth when I was on the oranges. Everything was looking good. I'm going, yeah, my fingernails were how rocks, and I'm going, yeah. But I just couldn't, I just couldn't get there like uh, some people got there, and then my life just went. <laughs> I mean, I've been moving fast in my life. They've taken me. I mean, when I first uh, started getting out of bodies, these masters came to me, and I'm suddenly, I'm all over the place. And I mean, my life is just like moving, like pedal to the metal. So it's just been, it's been a wild ride. Now I've had titanium implants. Join the crowd. Uh, I'm scared they are blocking my immune system. No, I don't think so. You know, the thing is, is, as long as you're dealing in alkalinity, everybody gets along. It's the acid principles that are the irritants. And so if it's an acid metal, bye-bye bone, bye-bye gums, bye-bye everything. That's what happens when you see the, uh, uh, the um, algums and things like this. I mean, it just chewed up our gums, all that mercury, uh, the nervous system in the teeth. I mean, just on and on and on. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. You had to do what you had to do. You know, and I had to do what I do. You have to do what you have to do, but you keep on going. You keep getting your body healthy. You keep working on yourself. We're all working on ourselves. Nobody's perfect. If anybody thinks they are, okay. Whitish yellow mucus is coming up constantly from my throat. So it's just white and yellow, yellow subacute. I dare say, my dear friend, you're probably going to get a little worse stuff coming yet. As you dig in a little deeper, that yellow's probably going to move a little toward the green and the brown side. So just, you know, Plan on some deeper stuff coming out of you there. Uh, I would take that. If you're getting a little bleeding that way, I have a bleeding formula and an antispasmodic formula. The antispasmodic formula is for, for spasms, convulsions, seizures, that sort of thing. And the bleeding formula is when you're bleeding internally. The women can use it when they have excess bleeding. You have any internal bleeding at all, you get the bleeding formula. It'll stop internal bleeding. It'll slow up menses till you fix the pituitary. That way you don't run yourself into anemia. Uh, let me see here. But I have to uh, hawk it up. Can't cough. Ooh. Well, it shows you how acidic and how locked in that is. As you hydrate interstitially, as you get the kidneys filtering, hydration interstitially starts to take place on the high alkaline fruits and berries and melons. As that hydration comes, you'll be able to cough more. You'll have the nerve force because you're going to bring up your adrenals. You're going to bring up more neurotransmitters. You're going to bring up nerve force to cough more. You're going to see. You're going to, of course, hydrating interstitially is going to make mucus more a cationic, meaning more type of stuff. And so, <coughs> that's anionic when you cough and cough and cough and nothing comes up. Things are locked. That's high acid, high dehydration. When you hydrate, that stuff starts flowing again. <coughs> stuff like that. Again, this is so small. Forgive me here. Uh, I am taking your herbs, kidney, endocrine, lymphatic, upper circ, three lung tea, 
uh, heal all tea fruit, and I would I would use that three lung and heal all and gargle with it and hold it in my mouth and let it absorb a little bit. Don't make it too strong though. Make it kind of light and just kind of just as a a gentle healer of the throat. But it also has some astringent value with the plantain, so you get a little pulling of mucus. The three lung tea is all about hardened mucus and loosening that up. So you want to use that. You want to drink that uh, small amounts throughout the day, kind of loosen up all this congestion in the sinus clean up the bowels and kidneys so all this can break loose. When this isn't breaking loose, this down below is blocking it. So if you can't break your sinuses loose and you can't break your throat loose, fix down below it first and then it will break loose because it doesn't clean up from the head down closest to the kidneys. Uh, oh, on third day of a 13 day water fast, I like the, I like the numbers. My parotid glands swole up huge. Yeah, you're really blocked here, man. You are really lymphatically blocked, and you're sitting on high lymphatic blockage. You know, when this isn't moving, it's just sitting on top of stuff that's not moving. Uh, but I went down in five days. Our free uh, National Health Service is vile. Yeah, so is ours. Oh, wait, I just, but I hope it destroys the allopathic thinking enough to where we all join together and we come up to a higher level of helping humans. Then we all are friends, we all work together, and we're all working together so people can be healthy. But that's really contraindicated to the World Bank and the World Health Organization, remember? They see a population of 500 million worldwide. That's that's a level that's sustainable. Well, there's 350 million in America. America, and 500 million is all they feel this planet should have on it. These are the people that control wars and money and health and that, so no wonder the killing fields are so much. I mean, you got to stop and look. It's beyond conspiracy. They've openly now made these statements. And I told you about America Unearthed. It's a show where he's going showing you how the Vikings and all the world has already visited America way before Columbus did, right? And, it, and this one guy made this thing like Stonehenge, and it's the New Commandments. I'll tell you this on another video. And it's got the Ten Commandments, but from the eyes of the world or, One World Order. I love that one. We're God. We control the money. We're going to make the Ten Commandments for our new world. Well, I wouldn't want those guys' karma for all the tea in China. Those souls are going to be hanging around for a while and in some unpleasant places, I think. Ugh. Uh... My friends, a natural hygienist, cool. Iridologist, good deal. Saw some inflammation in my uh, so uh, kidneys, esophagus. Oh, I guarantee you. Plus lungs, trachea. No question, man. No question you're, you're limped up there. From being simply hoarse, my voice seems wrapped in mucus. It is. You're full of mucus. You just got to get alkaline and get this stuff out. Fruits, berries. I know you've been 30 years raw, but I'm telling you, fruits, berries, and melons, that's it. Get away from the vegetables. Dig deeper. Put yourself on these water fast. Good job. And it'll break loose. I guarantee you. You keep going. It'll break loose. I can't speak much starting to feel weak. I'm following all fruit. Now, oh, plus greens now. Eh, I don't know about that. I would do, uh, again, probably upper circulation and brain and nerve. Get that nervous system pumped up there. Get the blood flowing through the brain. St you know, just start doing everything you can to get all these fluids moving. Uh, I suppose a chronic condition like this will take ages. No, but it'll probably take you, you know, half a year to a year. It's possible. I haven't looked at your eyes yet. One second for years in traffic, so I guess there's impacted mucus. Sounds like you got impacted mucus. The problem is in this dehydration and acidosis and what that mucus does in that environment. You know, thickens, hardens, becomes a mass. Yeah, that sort of thing. That's why you can't get it out like you would like to. But you're, you'll keep working on it. Please answer me. Could the small amount of metal in my jawbone be causing this? No, 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 not at all. Love you, Dr. Morse, and love you too. Thank you so much. Uh, Karen. Oh, this is Karen. Hey, Karen. Sweetheart, yeah, you know, thanks for watching the videos. Uh, P.S. Can't see any filtering in urine. Damn! Well, that's this is her problem. Look at this, guy. She can't see any filtering in her urine, and this is why she's having a hard time breaking this loose. Oh, my God. Oh. Well, sweetheart, do not give up. Do not stop. You keep working it. You could do hot and cold applications to the throat, too. 
hot and cold, you know, kind of kind of like a, a massage therapy here, hot and cold. Work on the neural lymphatics up down the, the uh, cerebellum here, down the cervical C-spine and on down. Work, it up, uh, work on your neural lymphatic points on the front. Ow! Uh, that sort of thing. And you really, and work on your bowels, get your bowels cleaned up, get the GI brew, work on your kidneys, hit those kidneys hard with two kidney formulas. If you can't filter, I would suggest that maybe you jump over to a, uh, a kidney glandular for a couple of bottles. If that doesn't work, you need to change, go up to a lemon juice fast. Get a strong astringent fast. Might burn a little here if there's irritation, but it's going to pull strong astringents. So you'll do well with doing those things and you'll get that out of you. Well, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure sitting with you here, and um, I hope I didn't bore you with a little personal journey, but I thought it's important for, you know, people talking about different things, teeth and things out there, and so I thought it was important to kind of to understand that most of our wisdom comes in our whole life journey, and I've learned a lot more helping others than I did helping myself. You know, that's where you learn. And I've had a lot of years of clinical work, so it really has educated me, and I'm, I, I, I'm more than thankful for that. I love you guys. You're great. Hey, I'm always here for you, always. If you, if you need me, just, just go into your mind and picture me, and I'll be there. And we will all be there. We'll help each other through this. I love you all. You have fun today, and I hope you enjoy our videos. Thank you so much. May the blessings be.